So let's look at a few transformations of an object. Now in general there are three transformations that preserve both the size and shape of an object. And those transformations are rotation about a point or axis. A second is a reflection about a point, line, or plane. And a third is a translation in the plane or space. And these are the uh, three transformations that we will generalize using the language of algebra. Now from geometry, two shapes that can be made to coincide by any combination of rotations, reflections, and translations are said to be congruent. And there is one transformation that may seem trivial, but is very important from an algebraic point of view, and that is the transformation that uh, leaves the object or set unchanged. So, new definition. The function, which we denote with a lowercase letter i, in subscript x, which is a map from the set x back to itself, defined by i of x equals x is the identity function on the set X. Now clearly the identity function is a bijection and it is the unique transformation of a set that leaves the set unchanged. Okay, so new definition. Let f be a function from the set A into the set B. the function G mapping the set B into the set A is the inverse of the function F if and only if the composition G of F is the identity function on the set A and the composition f of g is the identity function on the set b. And if the function g is the inverse of the function f, we write g is equal to f inverse. So new theorem, the function f from the set A into the set B has an inverse if and only if the function f is bijective. So proof.
suppose that the function f, which again is a map from the set A into the set B, has an inverse. Let x and y be two elements in the set A, and suppose that f of x is equal to f of y, then f inverse of f of x is equal to f inverse of f of y. That is the composition f inverse with f of the element x is equal to the composition f inverse of f of the element y. The composition f inverse of f is the identity function on the set A, taking as an argument the element x on the left hand side, and on the right hand side we have the identity function on the set A, taking as an argument the element y, so that x is equal to y, and hence the function f is injective Now let the element b be an element in the set b, the codomain of the function f. Then the element b is equal to the identity function on the set b, taking as an argument the element b, where the identity function on the set b is the composition f of f inverse of the element b which is f of the element, which is f inverse of b. Where f inverse of b is an element in the set A, that is, for every element b in the set b, there exists at least one element a in the set a, such that b is equal to f of a, and hence the function f is surjective. And thus, the function f is bijective. So conversely, suppose that the function f, which again is a map from the set A into the set B, is a bijection and let the function g, which is a map from the set B into the set A, be defined by g of the element b is the element a if and only if f of the element a is the element b. Then the composition g of f is a map from the set a back into the set a where g of f of the element a is g of the element f of a which is g of the element b, which is the element a. That is, the composition g of f is the identity function on the set a. And similarly, The composition f of g is a map from the set b back into the set b where f of g of the element b is f of the element g of b 
which is f of the element a, which is the element b, that is, the composition f of g is the identity function on the set b, and hence the function g is the inverse of the function f. So notice that if the function f is a bijection, then it has an inverse. which we, we denote f inverse. Further, f inverse is also a bijection. Since it has an inverse, namely the original function f. So a new theorem, let f be a function from the set A into the set B, and let g be a function from the set B into the set C, if the functions f and g are both surjective, then the composition g of f is a surjection, if the functions f and g are both injections, then the composition g of f is a, uh, a an injection. And if the functions f and g are both bijections, then the composition g of f is also a bijection. So proof. First statement. As the function g is a surjection, we have that for every element c in its codomain, there exists an element b in its domain such that c is equal to g of b. And as the function f is a surjection, We have that for every element b in its codomain, there exists an element a in its domain such that b is equal to f of a. And so for every element c in the set c, there exists an element a in the set a such that c is equal to g of f of a which is the composition g of f of the element a. And hence, the composition g of f, which is a function from the set a into the set c, is a surjection.
So second statement. Let x and y be elements in the set A. And suppose that g of f of the element x is equal to g of f of the element y. Then we have that g of the element f of x is equal to g of the element f of y. Now as the function g is injective, we have that the element f of x is equal to the element f of y. And as the function f is injective, we have that the element x is equal to the element y. And hence the composition g of f, which once again is a function from the set A into the set C, is an injection. And the third statement, the result follows immediately from the first and second statements. So as an exercise, let x be a set and let t of x be the set of all transformations of the set x. show that the set of all transformations on the set X is a group under function composition. Okay, so we'll end here for today. Next time we will look at subgroups and we'll continue to look at transformation and permutation groups. And we'll also look at a real-world application of group theory to uh, chemistry. And uh, I will assume that you've had a course in chemistry that covers uh, basic bonding theories to uh, include especially valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So I hope you have enjoyed the third lecture. Thanks for watching.